These are practice exercises from page 338 and 341 in the textbook. We're going to learn how to predict electron domain and molecular geometries for a couple of different molecules. So first thing we want to do with these is what we always do, which is draw the Lewis structure. Once we draw the Lewis structure, we'll be able to figure out how many bonding domains there are on the central atom. So these charts here, these always refer to the geometry around the central atoms. That's what we're going to be paying attention to as we draw these structures. So let's go ahead and get started with the first one. You've got SeCl2. So if you look at the periodic table, you should see that Se is in group 6A, which means it brings six valence electrons. I've got two chlorines, each bringing seven valence electrons. So that's going to give me a total of 20 valence electrons in this structure. I'm going to draw the Lewis structure the same way I always do. I'm going to start by putting the first atom as the central atom. So I'm going to put Se in the center, and I'm going to do a single bond to each chlorine on the outside. Now each of those single bonds has cost me two electrons. Remember that that bond is a pair, bonding pair. So there's two electrons, four electrons. I'm going to use the rest of the electrons starting around the outside, making sure to complete the octet for the outside atoms before completing the octet for the center atoms. So, so again, I've already used four electrons. I've got 20 to work with. So there's two, four in the bonds. Here's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now the chlorine on the right-hand side has a complete octet. Here's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now the chlorine on the left has a complete octet. I've got four electrons left, so they're going to go in the center. So there's 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now to make sure I've got a correct Lewis structure, I want to go through and make sure the octets are indeed complete. So I can see that the chlorine on the right has two, four, six electrons that are non-bonding, and it feels like it's got two in the bond. So this chlorine feels like it's got eight around it. This chlorine's bonded in the same way, two, four, six, and it feels like these, so eight here. And then in the center, we've got two, four non-bonding electrons, two, four bonding electrons. So my central atom also feels like it's got an octet. So this is something we were doing last chapter, just drawing the Lewis structures. Now we're going to use the chart over here to try to figure out what the electron domain and the molecular geometry is. Again, when we do this, we're going to focus on the central atom. So that's all that we're worried about is the central atom. So if you look at our center atom here, you should be able to figure out how many bonding and non-bonding domains we have. So again, center atom here. And you see in the center atom, we've got two non-bonding and two bonding. That gives us a total of four electron domains. And since two are bonding and two are non-bonding, that must mean that we have a bent geometry. So we have a tetrahedral electron domain geometry because there are four electron domains, but we only have a bent molecular geometry because we can only see those two bonds. So it would be better to draw this Lewis structure in this way. So you should be able to recognize that this has a very similar shape to water because we in fact have a tetrahedral electron domain. But a bent molecular geometry. So again, there are two steps involved in answering these questions. First, you want to figure out how many electron domains you have. So one, two, three, four electron domains around the central atom. That's how we knew that the electron domain was tetrahedral. Figuring out that two of them were bonding and two of them were non-bonding helped us figure out that we've got a bent molecular geometry. And again, if we were to redraw this Lewis structure, we would probably draw it so you could see that bent shape more easily with the two chlorines pointed down and the two lone pairs of electrons pointed up. Again, a very similar shape to a water molecule. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Now we have an ion. We've got the carbonate ion. Again, checking the periodic table, we know that carbon is going to bring us four valence electrons. We've got three oxygens, each bringing six. And that negative two charge means that we've got two extra electrons. So that's going to give us a total of 24 electrons to work with in this structure. Again, we're going to do it the same way we always would. We're going to start by using the first one as the central atom. So we're going to put that carbon in the center, and then we're going to attach the oxygen atoms. 
So you should be able to see that I've used two, four, six electrons already to do the bonds. Now I'm going to put the rest of my electrons around the outside atoms first before moving to the center. So again, I've got 24 to work with. I've used six. Here's seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So now I've used all of the electrons and we need to check to see how the octets are. So I can see that this oxygen atom here has two, four, six non-bonding electrons. It's got two bonding electrons that it's sharing, so it feels like it's got eight. Since all of the other oxygens are bonded in the same way, all of the oxygens feel like they've got an octet. But if you look at this carbon in the center, it's only got two, four, six bonding pairs. So this carbon does not feel like it's got a complete octet. So what I should do at this point is I should take one of the non-bonding pairs of electrons from the oxygen and I should make that oxygen atom share it. So it doesn't matter which oxygen I remove it from, but I just take one non-bonding set of electrons and I turn that into a shared bonding set. Now when I've done this, this oxygen here still has an octet. It still has two, four non-bonding and two, four bonding, so it still feels like it's got eight electrons around it, but now carbon does as well because it's got two, four, six, eight bonding electrons as well. So when you have too few electrons, that's when you might need to use double or triple bonds. And again, I didn't change these oxygens, so they still feel like they have their octet. The last thing I want to do, since this was an ion with a charge, I want to make sure to put it in brackets with that charge on the outside so that we understand why it's got more electrons than it should. Okay, next thing we want to do is check out that central atom and figure out what the electron domain and molecular geometries are. So taking a look at our central carbon atom here, that central carbon atom only has one, two, three electron domains. So even though this is a double bond, it only counts as one electron domain because it's only pointed in one direction. So we're going to be looking here in the chart for something with three electron domains. If I take a look at those domains, all of them are bonding domains. So I've got one, two, three bonding domains and zero non-bonding domains. So both my electron domain geometry and my molecular geometry are trigonal planar. So in this case, my electron domain and my molecular geometry are the same. They're both trigonal planar. And this only happens when I don't have lone pairs on the central atom. Let's go ahead and look at the next few. So the next one I've got, BRF3. We're going to do this the same way we always would. Bromine is bringing seven valence electrons to this party. We've got three fluorines also each bringing seven. That's going to give me a grand total of 28 valence electrons. I'm going to draw the Lewis structure the same way I always would. I'm going to put my bromine in the center, single bonds to my fluorines, that's used six electrons, here's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, 24. Now I've got extra electrons. I have to use 28, so they're just going to go on the central atom. So here's 25, 26, 27, and 28. You have to use all of the electrons that you're given. Once you're done completing the octets on the outside atoms, you're going to have to put the extra ones on the center. So let's check everyone's octet. So this fluorine has two, four, six non-bonding electrons. It's got two bonding, so it does feel like it's got eight electrons around it. Same thing for this fluorine, two, four, six, eight, this has an octet, and two, four, six, eight, this also has an octet. So my fluorines are fine, they all have octets. Let's check out the bromine. Bromine has two, four non-bonding electrons and two, four, six bonding electrons. That means this bromine feels like it has 10 electrons around it. So this bromine is exceeding its octet. Not all atoms can exceed their octet, so we should check to make sure that it's okay for bromine to exceed its octet. 
Now, don't you check that? We're looking for something in the third period or below, something that's using its third energy level orbitals, and bromine fits that, so bromine can exceed its octet. So now we are ready to figure out what the electron domain and molecular geometry is for this molecule. Again, checking out my center atom. This time, I've got one, two, three, four, five electron domains. So I have quite a few more electron domains, so I'm going to need to use some more of the chart here. And if you look down here, something with five electron domains is over here. Try to figure out how many of them are bonding and non-bonding. So I see that I've got one, two, three bonding domains and two non-bonding. So again, checking the chart, that's going to put us down here. Three bonding, two non-bonding. So we're going to have a trigonal bipyramidal electron domain geometry, but a T-shaped molecular geometry. So if I were to redraw this structure, the way I would redraw it is to make it look more like that T shape. So let's redraw that to look more like the T shape. Now you don't have to do this the first time because there's really no good way for you to predict right off the bat what kind of molecular geometry we have, but I'm just going to redraw this to make it a little more obvious what we're dealing with. So bromine in the center, make that an obvious T-shape, and put my lone pairs of electrons on this. Notice that I'm putting both those pairs of lone electrons or non-bonding electrons on the bromine right there to make it look more like this picture, and I'll put the last couple on my fluorine. Okay, so again, writing out what this is, we had a electron domain geometry that was trigonal bipyramidal. But my molecular geometry was actually T-shaped. And again, hopefully you can see that that is a sideways T. There's the top of the T, and there's the line on the T. Again, you really can't tell the molecular geometry until after you draw it, so your first Lewis structure might not look exactly correct. That's fine. You can redraw it. You don't have to, but sometimes it's easier to see it when you redraw that Lewis structure. Okay, taking a look at our last one, we're going to do this exactly the same way we have for the rest of them. So iodine is going to give us seven valence electrons, got four chlorines, also each bringing us seven electrons. That negative charge means we've got one extra electron, so we've got a grand total of 36 electrons for this molecule. Start the same way that we always do. Iodine's going to go in the center. We're going to bond to four chlorines. So that's cost us eight valence electrons. We'll go ahead and fill out everyone's octet. Here's nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Since we still have four more electrons to go, those four electrons are going to go on the center atom, and now I've used all 36. Let's check everyone's octets. So this chlorine has got two, four, six non-bonding electrons and two bonding electrons. So this chlorine has an octet, two, four, six, eight. All the other chlorines are bonded in the same way, so you'd expect all those chlorines to have an octet. Checking out iodine, it's got two, four non-bonding and two, four, six, eight bonding electrons. So this iodine actually feels like it has 12 electrons around it, which again is exceeding its octet, but since iodine is below the third period, it's got those d orbitals to use to hold some of that electron density. This is fine. Iodine can exceed its octet. Last thing we want to make sure we do, since we did add an extra electron in there because of the charge, we want to make sure this guy ends up in brackets with the charge on the outside so we understand why there's an extra electron. Okay, let's use the chart to figure out our electron domain and molecular geometry. So checking out our central atom, we should be able to see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six 
electron domain. So six areas of electron density. That's going to put us over here. So we know we've got an octahedral electron domain geometry. And we should be able to see that one, two, three, four of them are bonding. Two of them are non-bonding. So that puts us over here, meaning we have a square planar molecular geometry. So again, an octahedral electron domain geometry. So that's my electron domain geometry because there are six total electron domains, but a square planar molecular geometry because all you'd be able to see are those four chlorine atoms around the middle which would be flat in the shape of a square those lone pairs of electrons would be on the top and the bottom of the molecule making it flat that's where the word planar comes from and square because those four things are going to be square so notice how that's different from being tetrahedral so in order to be tetrahedral you would have to have only four electron domains and they are not flat so nothing's planar about that those are at opposite corners of a tetrahedron. Again, in order to solve these problems, it's going to be best if you look at the chart after you draw the Lewis structure. Drawing the Lewis structure is the same way we've always done it. Make sure you're counting the atoms, thinking about the charges. And when you do electron domain and molecular geometries, you're looking only at the center atom. That's what we use in order to determine our electron domain geometry and our molecular geometry.